make sure as always you stick your finger with that well, that's a good one all right we spent uh, probably the better part of an hour trying to get as much glue out of here as I can and even now I still see some areas where the glue is there and I'm trying to get as much of it out as I can we run into a big problem well we haven't run into it it's been here the whole time in that there's just a lot of wood missing here and I don't know if that's from when it originally got pulled off um, the run out tends to do go in this direction so if you if you just graze it it just wants to dig right down in there so and uh, nothing sticks to old urethane glue so we're trying to get rid of all of that we're also in the process of heating up I made a, um, a set of clamps um, and we're heating those up right now I can't heat them up in my hot pot because my hot pot's not it's not big enough to, to hit to, to hold those so we're boiling those on the stove upstairs and then uh, we're gonna run up there grab them run back down here get the bottom one put up in there clamp the top one down tighten those down and uh, try to um, try to get this to flatten out a little bit I'm also just putting a little bit of um, a little bit of water on here just to try to soften this up a tiny bit get some moisture in there so let's see hot fit in there with my gloves on really hot now the original bridge plate is on the back so I'm really not sure how much relief this is going to give us. So, if we could take the back off, it would be a different story. Um, if we could take the back off, we'd take that old bridge plate off of there, that one that runs all the way across here, and we'd put a new one on. Um, and then and then we would flatten it all out because my my guess is that this bridge plate goes like this and then it twists with the top and then it twists back out that's my guess so we'll let this sit um, for a while and uh, wow it's really hot uh, we'll let this sit for a while and um, hopefully we can pull a little bit of that belly out mm. I don't know it's a shot um, we're also gonna put one cleat here I'm gonna put one cleat here and I'm on the fence about whether or not I'm gonna cleat this or not I probably am just because it's it follows the grain line here and then it goes up and it stops 
I'm gonna figure we'll just beat it to the punch. We'll put a cleat right here and um, hopefully we'll keep that from spreading up. Hopefully this thing will get humidified the way it needs to be and then this stuff will, will just become kind of a non-issue. But So anyways, and this is just um, this is just quarter, no, three-eighths inch by one inch um, steel. You just get it at the local big box store. Um, I traced it to the outline of this right here. So, all right, I guess we should put some, well, we're going to wait till this cools off and then we'll put some, maybe we'll put this clean in. I'm going to put this cleat right here at the uh, furthest most part of that crack. It's taken me a couple of tries, but I finally kind of have a system. Say that now I can't do it. There we go. And <laughs> I forgot to put my stupid cleat on. Welcome on the train wreck, kids. There we go. So now I've waxed that. That will go on there like that. I'm clear of a brace. Just in time for the air handler to come on. Perfect. Still warm. Let's see. We'll get this one glued on and then I'll kind of tell you what one of my patrons gave me a pretty good idea. So now we unclip this. That goes up under there. Okay, that's good. Probably could have done this beforehand. Keeping the tension on, which makes it even more fun. Make sure, as always, you stick your finger with that. Well, that's a good one. Um, Randy Schardiger came up with, mentioned something to me, 
and uh, it's actually a pretty good idea. Let's zoom in on this. His suggestion was that on these cleats that you can see right there is that I use the tear out as an indicator of where I'm located at because you'll notice the grain is running this way and my tear out is on kind of like the 2 and 8 <clears throat> on the 2 and 8 um, clock lines and it runs the same on that piece of uh, rosewood and there should be one and sure enough it runs the same on that piece of western red cedar that you can almost see there we go so <clears throat> once I got that cleat up under there I used my little finger there and checked to make sure that I had one of those tear outs at either here or here um, I have it like this so when I have the tear out down here then I've got um, then my grains correctly oriented so that's a little trick that we're going to use. It's actually not the one that I was thinking of, but I'm still waiting. If you guys want to still put a comment in there, um, then we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to put one more cleat in. I'm going to put it right here, um, and then we're going to. I think we're going to call that good. Hey, if you like this episode of Rattle Cane Guitar Restorations, you might want to check this video out as well. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, and if you'd like to help the channel grow consider stepping over to our Patreon page and giving that a look. Y'all have a good weekend. Cheers.